Uh, this next project is a little bit more advanced, so I would recommend this is something that uh, the instructor, you do this as a demonstration, and then only if you've got some students who, uh, who are really doing well, uh, uh, to let them go at it. You never know. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, I've got a small section, about five millimeter uh, rod, uh, and uh, again, the overall length of it is about eight inches, but I'm not going to need that much of it. I fire polish the end, and what I'm doing now is I'm heating up about an inch of the glass. I don't want it to become molten that it's going to become too soft on me, but I do need it so that it's hot, so that way when I put the, uh, the colored glass on it, when I streak this glass on it, it will, it will stick. So now I've got a small section of a uh, yellow glass rod stringer, and I'm heating up the glass stringer that it becomes molten. I'm trying to keep my hands in a position that you as the viewer will see everything that's going on. So uh, you don't have to match the exact hand position that I'm doing. Uh, so now I take the yellow rod, keep it in the flame, touch the colorless to it, and then I basically just streak it on here. Notice how I'm wiggling uh, the uh, colorless rod. And then as I get about an inch of glass on here, I detach. Okay? And you'll have this little nub on the end. Uh, if you don't have graphite, what you can do is uh, heat it up a little bit and then take some tweezers and mash it down just a little bit. That, should help reduce some of the stress that is built up by adding the glass. And what you want to do at this point is heat up that section of glass in the flame and make sure that you have a very good weld uh, of the uh, color stringer that you placed onto the, uh, the base rod. If you lift the glass as you're doing this and there's an air bubble uh, or, or an air gap, heat that section up and then again mash it down with your tweezers and then reheat it. Because if you have a little loop uh, in there, what will happen is you'll build up stress. Uh, now I'm just going to grab another color and do that uh, same thing to the opposite side. The analogy uh, I use you know, for my students is uh, should, have, should have done this with the yellow. Imagine this is a stick of butter and this is toast. So you get the butter nice and warm, take the toast, and then spread it over. Nobody butters their bread that way, but uh, hopefully, hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing with blue. I want to keep the rod, uh, a colorless rod, warm, but I don't want it to get too hot, too out of control. So now, Touch it, and then smear that on there. Again, nice streak. You want to try and get them the same length. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I've got two colors on the opposite sides. I'm going to heat that very end of the blue so I can mash that down a little bit. Anytime, again, you touch with your tweezers, Go ahead and reheat that area because you don't want it to get cold and build up stress. I have another section of uh, soft glass that I'm going to use uh, to punty up and this will allow me to twist the glass. I'm going to make a hot seal at this point because the glass on my left will eventually become the hook or the bail of the icicle. By the way, this, I'm calling this an icicle, but obviously this could also be for a small pendant or any little decorative item. So I touch these two together. Okay. I still need to heat them a little bit more just to make sure that I've got my, my hot seal. And this particular project is a little bit more on the advanced side, so I would definitely recommend practicing this quite a bit. 
So the reason I'm heating very strongly uh, at the interface of my punty uh, is because I need to make sure that I don't have two pieces of glass, that I have one segment of glass that has been fused together. Okay? So now I'm going to heat the, uh, the body of uh, my icicle up again, just to, because it hasn't been in the heat that long. It doesn't matter which direction you work. I'm going to work from what will be the bottom of the icicle up. So I'm going to heat this. So if you imagine this, uh, your uh, icicle being divided up into thirds, this is the bottom third, then we have the middle third, and the top third is where the uh, uh, bale will go. So I'm heating this bottom third, starting, starting to become soft come out of the flame and give it a little bit of a twist and pull. Now, how aggressively you twist and pull is up to you. I like to just basically give it a little gentle twist and just barely pull at the beginning and I'll come back to taper it a little bit later. So now I'm heating up the third or the middle third and notice how I'm moving side to side. That gives me more surface area. Come out, twist, and pull. Twist and pull. There we go. You notice how it's bulging up on the very end? That's, that's normal. That's okay because I can thin that out later. What will be the top of the icicle, I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to twist, but I'm not going to pull very hard. And the reason why is I want it to be thicker. I want that to be the thickest part of the taper. Then twist and give it a little pull. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a twist at the top, very top. If you twist while you're in the flame or pull while you're in the flame, it's very easy for the glass to get out of control. So it's a good idea to come out, then make your move, and then go back in. So now I'm going to heat up that very end. And as you're working, you do want to keep the entire piece hot. So every now and then, uh, move it back and forth to splash it with some, some heat. This section of glass that I'm heating up, I could actually discard this if I wanted this icicle to be much uh, shorter in length. But I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist and pull. There we go. And I'm going to hold it like this so you, the viewer, can see what's going on. This will be the bottom. This will be the top. Okay. So I'm happy with uh, the overall structure of my, uh, my icicle. I'm going back and forth to just keep everything nice and hot so that way I don't get uh, a stress crack or anything like that. And this is a little bit more tricky making the bale. There's several ways to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up about, I would say, half an inch of the colorless glass onto the left. And as it becomes molten, I'm actually compressing it a little bit. I'm actually making it like it was a gather. And you'll see why in a second. So I want essentially a nice blob of glass that's nice and hot. I'm going to switch hand position. So I'm going to, there we go, okay. that little splashy heat. And this is both because uh, it'll make it easier for me to show this into the camera, uh, you know, show the camera what I'm doing. Uh, and because I'm right-handed, uh, uh, I like having having the bale in this configuration. So now what I'm going to do, I've got a nice blob of that, that colorless glass, nice and hot. I'm going to come out of the flame. I pull away. I bring it towards. And then, boom, stick the landing. Now what I need to do is remove 
this excess glass. I could use my tweezers right here, but instead I'm going to come in and I'm actually, notice how I'm using the glass rod as a tool. There we go. If you have a graphite uh, reamer at this point, you could go in to the hook and uh, widen this out. Uh, I don't have one with me, so what I'll show you, a trick you can do, take your tweezers on the inside, give it a little push like that. Since I touched it with metal, it cools down rapidly, so I definitely want to heat it back up to remove any metal marks and uh, uh, from, or uh, chill marks, as they're called, from touching with the metal. And I'm okay with that. Notice how this has turned yellow, and that's because I haven't heated it in a while. So paying attention to the colors is very important to understanding the temperature with some of these glasses. So now I've got, I've got a hook, I've got a nice taper of my spiral, and so I'm going to detach right around here. You could detach all the way down here if you wanted to make, if get all of the color, but aesthetically it'll actually look better if I detach around here. So I warm up my tweezers a little bit. And that's to prevent thermal shock. I heat right around there, that area I want to detach. See how it's flopping? That's okay. Take that, heat, give it a little pull, a little twist, and there we go. To bring it back on axis, notice how I, I flipped it around. So now, that where you can see it, I place this on my thermal pad to cool. If I had a, a fiberglass blanket or some other insulating material, I could place it into that to cool. Soft glass will crack if you, if you are too uh, aggressive with your heating and cooling of it. Uh, so uh, uh, even if it cracks at this point, that's okay. Because again, learning how to make this icicle, uh, learning the technique of it, uh, is, is really the more important uh, aspect of this. And I'll let this cool down and then I'll take some photos uh, of it. So how did I do? Well, I have a uh, icicle that's approximately two inches in length. Uh, I didn't use all of the colored glass. There was just a little, little bit left over, but that's normal. Uh, and remember, I streaked about one inch of glass, a color glass onto the rod. So I started very small and then I basically, you know, doubled the length of the, uh, uh, the final uh, uh, item. Without a doubt, keeping the length of the icicle small when you're first learning is very important. Uh, that was a lesson, uh, the very painful lesson I learned because if you streak four inches of glass and then try and uh, wind everything up, you know, twist it up and control it, as a beginner, it, you're going to have problems. But if you start with uh, one inch of glass or maybe three-fourths of an inch of glass and go from there, uh, you'll, you'll be more successful. And then once you've learned how to do this, uh, you, you really can you know, scale up and translate it into uh, to other other items and again making the bail making the hook is a little tricky but it, it takes some practice uh, to get it uh, there are some other methods for making a hook uh, but uh, like I said the the method where you take the glass the glass while it's molten and essentially wrap it onto itself uh, is something that it's not trivial but it is worth the effort because if you can if you can make a shepherd's hook like this, then you will be able to do lots of other techniques in uh, scientific glass blowing that require you moving the molten glass and doing it in a way where you you're you're confident you have control. So uh, yeah, take the time, learn how to make the shepherd's hook. Uh, it's very annoying. Uh, from my experience, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time failing at making glass icicles and especially the shepherd's hook portion of it, but it, it, it pays off uh, if you're persistent.